Okay, welcome back to some high fleet shipbuilding. Uh, I've got a carrier and a missile carrier to build in this video. The aimed goal of these ships is to have about 300 kilometers per hour top speed. I want them to have a cruising range of about 6,000 kilometers so they can move around the map quite quickly, support our strike fleets as they move forward, like move into the hot spots essentially and provide support while staying away from the front line, being self-sufficient and in the late game kind of switching over to be part of our main fleet where they can dispatch their support weapons quite well. The missile carrier is going to maybe be need to be a little bit faster than the aircraft carrier because it needs to get quite close. I'm, prim I'm planning on arming it with A100 uh, miss ballistic missiles rather than the KH-15s, which have a longer range. Um, let's not forget that the R3s, although they do exist in the game, are I don't think you can actually get them in the campaign uh, unless you destroy the the missile carrier right at the end of the game that carries. I don't think you can purchase them anywhere. Maybe I'm wrong. I've never seen them for purchase in the game. I may have not looked in the right place. So we're going to build the aircraft carrier first. And I mentioned before that it needs to have a 6,000 kilometer range. The best way to do that is we're going to be using the TC-400 fuel tanks. Probably about five of these will give us the range that we need. But the big question we need to ask ourselves is what engines we're going to be using on this ship because we want to get a high speed. We want to get very, we want to get to be very fuel efficient. And that really, when you start to talk about fuel efficient engines, you're talking about reasonable speed and you're talking about a decently sized ship. The ship needs to be big enough to carry the planes that are going to be on it. It needs to have a decent, um, surface area for them to sit on. We start wondering if maybe RD-51s are actually the engine we want to go to over the D-30S. All of my ship builds up till now have primarily used D-30Ss. D-30S is our static thruster. You can only mount them straight downwards as far as I'm aware. I'm trying to flip it, you can't flip it. Same with the RD-51. Um, there is ways to do it, but I see it as cheating, at least in my, for this campaign. Um, and it gives you 21, uh, I think it's mega newtons, I'm not sure, of thrust, whereas the RD-51 gives you 65. So you're looking at, to match the power of an RD-51, you're probably looking at roughly, I would say, two D-30Ss. It doesn't quite work out as that, because this comes out at 42, whereas this has got 65. Actually, you could get away with three, would bring it a bit closer, because you've got 63. So this is, these, this, this is roughly the equivalent of this. Now, we do have one slight problem. Uh, if I wanted to try and match these together to see what the numbers were like, I'd actually run into a problem, whereas if I put one RD-51 on my ship, it wouldn't actually give me any engine information. So let's just get another RD-51 out of here, and I'm gonna do a quick experiment. So to, in order to match two RD-51s, I wanna need three D-30Ss, so six D-30Ss, to kind of get similar thrust. Hopefully this is making sense. So if I get three D-30Ss out here, and I'll just map, Make, put these in armor, add some fuel, put them on an engine, see what our stats are like, and then do the same thing for these six engines, and just see which works out as, as the nicest for us. Now, the RD-51 can only be mounted in large hull. This is a large hull piece here. It is the same price. It costs 80 credits. Um, same price as four pieces of hull, right? So you've got that to pay attention to as well. Four pieces of hull equals one piece of this. But this weighs a hell of a lot more than this. And it has apparently the same durability. Um, these have 100 durability, this is 400 durability. So four of these is 400 durability. It's an interesting, the, the, the math gets very interesting at this stage. But let's just very quickly build a very basic ship that just has two large hull, it has two RD-51s in it. And if I put my th this on here, we should get some stats. Um, we don't have a range or consumption, so let's just add a hull piece, and I'm just going to add um, some fuel tank. In fact, we'll just stick a fuel tank on here, okay? So with one large fuel tank, the bare minimum pieces, this is just what we've got. We've got a top speed of 585 kilometers per hour and a range of 5,230 kilometers. We have a thrust to weight ratio of 6.5, and our consumption is 86 tons per 1,000 kilometers. That's very low consumption. Now, obviously, this is a you know a, a, not a built ship, but this is just our the this is the bare minimum I can put on a ship to test these engines. They're not even powered right now, right? So we don't actually have enough power on here for them to work. So these numbers aren't quite right. But we're going to do the same thing with the D30s. So I'm just going to take my end, my bridge off here, add it on here, and I'm just going to add in one, two, three, four, five, six. I want to add six D30Ss, which is roughly the equivalent of two of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're gonna add on the fuel tank. And now we're looking at a top speed of 1,597 kilometers per hour. We're looking at a range of 8,320. We're looking at a consumption of 54 per ton, per thousand kilometers, and a thrust to rate ratio of 17.7. .7. So to me, if we go back and forth here, if we're looking for sheer efficiency and sheer speed, bearing in mind this is not a combat ship, the numbers to me are saying that we go with the D30s. Now there are other things to take into account here that I'm not thinking about. Um, this is a much more fuel efficient engine for combat. A 
and it's probably in a better housing as well in terms of armor. It does also open us up access to the RD-59, which is a very good maneuvering thruster. But this ship's not going to be doing maneuvering. It's never going to get into combat. If it gets into combat, it's dead. That, that's the plan I'm having for it. So I'm going to stick with the D-30Ss, and I'm going to be really interested to see how people think about that. I'm probably going to get some really interesting arguments that this is not the correct way to go, that I should be using the RD-51s. I will build a ship with RD-51s. My flagship's going to use them. But for now, we're going to stick with the D-30s. So let's just reset the board, and let's start building this ship. Now, I want to make sure that I have enough of a runway for three T-7s, that's a supersonic fighter, and at least three LA-29s. The reason I'm going with threes is the way the game works. If when you send a aircraft strike out, if you have four fighters or more than three fighters in that attack wing, they'll attack in groups of three. So if I was to send four out, the first three would come in, make an attack run, fly away, and then the next plane would come in. And by that time, the enemy's guns have probably loaded and they can shoot down your planes with standard fire. But if you only send, if you send them in groups of three, they'll come in together, attack, pull out before the enemy have loaded their guns. And then the next wave will attack in its own little attack window. And again, the enemy need to load their guns. Ideally, I'd like six LA-29s, but honestly, I think that's a bit overkill. The other option is I maybe go with two T-7s and get that, maybe get the six LA-29s. They are very expensive, although the T-7s are not that much more expensive than the LA-29s, and they are a little bit rarer, so I think I'd rather have more T-7s at the start of the game than LA-29s. So we're gonna go with three LA-29s, three, um, sorry, three T-7s, three LA-29s. In order to put them on my ship, I'm gonna need a runway, so I'm just gonna put some hull down to start with, and I'm using the single pieces of hull because they have slightly better durability than the double piece, and we're just gonna get the flight deck out, and we're just gonna do one, two, three. So I think a T7 gets mounted in two pieces of hull. So if I want to mount three of these, I need six hull. So one, two, three. Uh, so it's, should be six there. So you should be able to get three T7s on this here. One, two, three. Now I could do one of two things here. I could, if I wanted to extend the uh, flight deck out along, or I could go for some sort of uh, double decker situation. If I just show you like this, I could actually fit the T7s in, sorry not the T7s, T7s won't fit in there, but I can fit LA-29s in here, and they will actually launch. I can actually fit a fourth one in here, which is quite nice, That's I'm, I'm quite liking that, yes, I can send these out in groups of two, rather than groups of three. Um, and that could be the build we go for. The other option is instead of doing a, like the double decker, I do a long runway, but this makes the ship a little bit more compact. We'll maybe investigate what this looks like. Now, I also mentioned that I wanted about five of these fuel tanks. So let's just slot them in and see how that looks. So that's three. We can get a fourth one here. And if I remove, th I don't actually want to remove this piece of hull because it's very important. Uh, maybe if I do something like this, it's probably a bit silly. Uh, see, one of the things about doing a long stretch is it makes the fuel tanks a bit easier to work out, but I could do, this is probably a bit daft now. If we do this, we've got these big fuel tanks and then do another four here. I don't really like that. Or we could do, we could do, we could do six like this. I was thinking five or six. We could do it like this, right? It's a very deep long ship now. I'm not too happy with the way this is gonna look at the end if I do it like this. Um, because what I've done is I've sacrificed uh, my, my horizontal dimensions for a much bigger vertical dimension. And that does make the radar sign a lot higher. So let's look at that. We've got a radar sign of 469 with this configuration. If I instead take the this off here and just add one, so that's that's two LA-29s, and then that's three LA-29s. And we'll just remount them here, one, two, three. And we'll figure out that fourth one for the moment. And we'll just get rid of all these pieces here. Okay, and then we just reset our fuel tank. So one, two, three, four, Five. I'm just going to go with five, I think, at the moment. Now we've got a radar sign. It's gone down by about 70 kilometers. It feels a bit more aircraft carrier for me for it to be this long straight shape rather than that double-decker shape. The double-decker shape has some interesting applications to it, but I don't think it's the right one for me right now. Now, a very important thing to remember when you're using these big fuel tanks is that power will not transfer through them. So I need to make sure that I've got hull around both sides of them so that power and ammo can transfer through the ship as it won't transfer through these. So these are just like corridors for power that I'm building here. And then what I probably wanna do is I wanna put in some of these hull pieces like this. So we'll put one here, we'll put one here, we'll put one here, 
We'll put one here, I'm gonna put one here as well. And that just gives us some basic structure. And then we're gonna add in our, just some hull components here that we can put some useful items in. Okay. So we've got our basic superstructure of the ship. And the next thing I wanna look at is how I want to make sure this thing is engined and armored and fueled. One of the things you'll notice is we need ammo because these fighters need ammo to actually be loaded. I need six ammo. So I need to put three of these in. So I'm just gonna put them in the middle here. So one, two, three. That's all the ammo the ship is gonna need. Let's add in some generators. So I need, um, that's actually enough power at the moment, but I'm gonna have a higher power requirement. So just before I get lost in that, I'm gonna add another power plant in here. Then I wanna add some engines. I need some T30s, just some standard ones for maneuvering, just so I can land the ship in case I need to. So they're in there for that. And now let's add D30Ss and see what we end up with. So we'll go one, two, three. And as I said before, six of these is roughly the equivalent of two RD51s. So what we've ended up with is 337 kilometers per hour, a range of 6,993 kilometers. That's pretty much what I was looking at. My, my floor for speed is 337 kilometers per hour. So if we got a bit lower than this, we'd be in trouble. This ship as is will operate but I do want to get a little bit more out of it. It doesn't have any defenses right now and it doesn't have any role apart from launching missiles. So what I want to do is I want to add a little tower here. We'll go maybe up three. And I'm going to go into my sensors and someone's asked me to go through these sensors. And if you're looking to know what all the different sensors do, Carousel has some really great videos on how these work. I might do some if there's demand, but I would recommend their videos first because they're really, really good. But basically, um, a quick run through, these are basic long range radars. Then we've got your ELINT systems, your electronic intelligence systems to detect enemy radar sweeps. Then you've got your fire control tracking radars. Um, the difference between the these and these is that they have a smaller range, but they'll allow your missiles to track, especially your sprints, which is your anti-air defense missiles. Then down here we have the IRS-1 Mars. This is a infrared sensor. Uh, and then the unnamed thing here is, is a radar jammer. And then finally, you have your high frequency radio antenna, which are very important, which I realize I missed off one of my builds, but don't worry, I'll be putting that back on before we get into the campaign. But what I'm thinking about mounting on this ship here is the MR-12 fire control search radar. This gives us a radar range of 400 kilometers on this ship, but it also gives us track a guidance or tracking for two anti-air missiles. So one of the things that this ship's probably going to take more than direct fire is it's going to be attacked by um, either fighter jets or by missile. So I'm thinking about mounting on it some anti-air defenses. So I'm thinking some Sea Whiz in the form of a 37 millimeter gun. And I'm also thinking uh, possibly we're looking at some um, sprints as well. Now, one thing I'm just looking at here is I might remove this single piece here and just move the hull back slightly because I was gonna put a gun here and this hull on top of it, will actually that won't affect the coverage, but it will make the ship a little bit more compact. So I'm just gonna move these back. Bear with me one second while I do that. A little bit tedious while I do this. You can see how sticky these pieces are. I'll have to reseat all these um, fighters as well in a second, unfortunately. So we can go put a T7 back here, T7 back here, T7 back here, here, here and here and then we'll add in i'm thinking two 2a 37s which is basically as far i'm because i'm as far as i'm concerned the bare minimum for anti-air defense you'll notice that the um fuel tank will block these but they should be missiles should be coming in from above and they both have pretty full coverage from above apart from this angle over here and then what i'm also going to do is add in some hull so uh one two three one two three i think that's not going to block and then we'll add in uh, sprints, which are anti guided missiles. One, two, three. One, two, three. And we have a little bit of a bridge here that's also going to act as a launch point for our sprints. We now need more ammo, so uh, that's for these two guns here. So we'll add in another ammo component. We'll just pop that. We'll put it a little bit above the bridge just so that if that gets blown up, we don't lose it. We now need a little bit more power, just a touch more power. So I'm actually going to go in and put in a half size generator. Uh, we'll put it here at the front of the, actually we'll put it back here at the back of the ship. Um, that's just got everything we need. We're now down to 299 kilometers per hour, which I would say is my bare minimum for speed. 
Um, I would like it to be a little bit over 300. So I've got two things I can investigate here. I could either now see if it's a little bit better with the RD51s, which I think I will investigate, or I could add in some more D30Ss by moving some stuff around. I've got room to maybe move this ammo up here and put an engine in here, or I could split one of these ammo boxes up into two and put it in here. But just for a thought experiment, let's remove these engines for the moment. Oops. Let's remove these two pieces of hull. This is not gonna look very pretty, but I just wanna see how it comes out. And oops, and I'm gonna add in two large hull here. So one, two, and then in those two pieces of large hull, I'm going to mount our RD-51s. One, two. So this does, this comes out with better range, but worse speed. So now we're looking at a top speed of 7,000, sorry, excuse me, a top speed of 240 kilometers per hour, but a range of 7,000, um, Kilometers, which is a really nice range. And what I could potentially do is add in just a couple of bits of hull like here and here to tidy it up. And then I could go into our engines and add in another two D30Ss. Give us a bit more throat. That's us up to 297 kilometers per hour. It's barely worth adding those in. The, the return on investment I'm getting on these engines is very low. So look, if you look at the first engine, we go from we go from 235, so we get 30 kilometers per hour out of that, and we lose almost five, we lose almost eight, 600 kilometers of range from adding this engine in. Adding the second engine in takes us from 266 to 267, but we hardly lose any range on that one. So the, after the first engine, it does get a little bit better. If I add in another engine, we go up to 238, we don't lose that much range. And if I add this engine in, we go up to 358. We're still over the 6,000 kilometers range that I wanted as our, our speed, and I'm quite happy with that. I think that's okay. Now, the things that this ship is missing, it's still missing a couple of important things. Uh, I'm gonna put a block in here and very cheekily mount a radio, radio in this spot here, just so it can pick up radio transmissions, but it isn't blocking anything. Now, the game is being very picky here, and I'm now, because this needs like one megawatt of power or something very ridiculous, I'm actually an engine that's done that. I'm at 99% power, um, which is annoying, because <laughs> I really want it to be power compliant. But adding another power plant in is going to weigh more. So if I go into generators, actually what I could do is remove this generator here and add in a large generator, so now we're up to 355, 6,000. We're still doing okay. We haven't lost that much speed. This is looking a little bit like a bridge as well, which I quite like. Um, the other thing we don't have at the moment are any escape pods. And we don't have a, we don't have enough crew, but that's easy to fix. We just get some small quarters and we can mount them in these sections here. That's up to 40% crew, 52% crew. Wow, we're very low on crew. We're still not quite crew compliant with that many pieces of um, crew capacity added in. But what I could do is replace uh, this with, remove this, remove this, replace it with standard hull here. Um, and then we can add in another one of these like this, just to see how this looks. We'll put the D30S back in this slot just for it to look neat. And we'll add in a large crew quarters here. And that gets us up to the full crew comp component. We're still over 340. We've dropped our range very slightly. Um, I don't think I've got any room to slip fuel tanks in at this point. Every single component on the ship has been moved up. 5892 is okay. But the last thing I need to add in that I haven't added to this ship left yet is any landing gear. And um, landing gear is gonna be a bit awkward. Probably the best places to put landing gear are here and here. So let's just remove these engines for a second. We're gonna add in some square hull pieces. So I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna add a square hull piece in here. I'm gonna remove this. And uh, let me just click this in here. Put this in here. And we'll put these back on just so they, they fit under there. Um, we'll put these engines back on the outside areas. So it's 339 kilometers per hour. We're still over our, our my target of 300 kilometers per hour. And then I can now add in some, I think I actually need a heavy duty leg for this ship just because it's weighing 6,000 tons. So I'll add a leg in here, a leg in here, and we'll just add in these two landing gear like this. And what we might actually do is just put some toes on here just to give it some flex when it lands. So that's taking us to 323. I think that's okay. I don't really like how that looks though. It looks like a weird horse, but that's very easy to fix generally. What we'll do is we'll take this leg here and we'll just put it like that. So there's just a little bit more of an upward motion in it. And we'll just re-add these legs if I can click on them. And we'll just delete this. There's the dog. She's probably wanting to get back in. It's very warm today. Um, so she's probably coming in and out. And uh, we'll just fix this here. 
Okay, and now we have a. Uh, we we have an air, an aircraft carrier. We've got three hundred twenty three kilometers per hour. We're down to five thousand five hundred sixty one kilometers of range. Just to, that's round about the same as a Skylark, which isn't too bad. Um, using four hundred um, tons of fuel per one thousand kilometers, which is a lot, um, but it should be fine. And then I need to add some escape pods. I'm not really going to add too many, but we can probably we can put one in here. Like that. Now, now we've got 40% covered on escape pods. Um, I, I would quite like it to be escape pod compliant just because it's cute. What I'm going to do is add in these four bots here. We'll do some downward facing escape pods. One, two, three, four. 71%. I'm happy enough with that. The whole crew's not going to get out. Still over 300 kilometers per hour. A lot of people think these are an indulgence you don't really need on your ship. Same with the landing gear, but I like to have them. Let's just test the landing in this ship. Let's see if it can actually land. Um, we'll go for these two fives over here. It's very slow to move because we've only got those two maneuvering thrusters on it. It can arrest its fall, but not by much. The good news is it's not going to run out of fuel on a landing. Now I could armor this up, but really you'll notice that I'm very much avoiding armor on anything that doesn't need it in this fleet. I'm just bring this down nice and gently. and the legs can't quite take the weight at the angle that they're at. So that's something to bear in mind. The front leg couldn't take it. The back leg could, but the front leg couldn't. So um, I might need to just rethink this. It's funny that the front leg, back leg couldn't, the front leg could We'll just maybe just put the angle down a little bit more. It might not be enough. Um, and I'll just quickly test that, if that will take the weight. Otherwise I need a bigger leg. Oops, I wanna grab this little toe here. There we go. Whoops, no, I want it like that. All right, let's just quickly test the landing on that, see if that works. At least we don't have to move the ship around. We've got a flat landing field below us. Um, so we'll just come in and we'll rest our fall before we hit the ground. It looks like one of our toes hasn't come out. If you look on the top right-hand corner, one of the toes hasn't deployed properly. So that's something to fix as well. Okay, we rested our fall. And we'll just come in nice and gently. No, that front leg, oh, it managed to hold. The front leg managed to hold. Oh, it managed to hold, but not very well. Uh, that front leg's really funny. Yeah, we lost we lost a toe on the, in the back here. I'm not sure what to do about this. I might I might revisit this off screen and just fix this, this leg because it's not landing properly. Maybe the angle's quite wrong. But in terms of this ship, look, it's a bit ugly. But it's a support ship that's going to be flying around in the background. In fact, just I just thought I could put a whole piece here and a whole piece here, and I could fit possibly fuel tanks in them. I don't think that's worth it. 3.5, 312 kilometers per hour. I don't think it's worth putting those fuel tanks in. If I remove them, 5471. No, it's not worth it. Let's get rid of these. And the thing is, they're not square, so I can only get two fuel tanks in there. I also don't have any um, fire extinguishers on the ship. Again, if it's getting shot at, it's pretty much dead anyway. It's not going to escape combat ever. Like, no support ship like this is ever going to escape combat. So I'm, I'm quite happy with it being like this. So I'm going to save this as our... Um, I, need, I, need, I need a ship a name for this as well. We'll just call this Carrier 1 for now. But I need a good ship name for it. And that's our first ship we're looking at. So let's reset. And let's have a look at our missile carrier. So the missile carrier I want to have, I'm aiming for six A100s. Each A100 is going to need two um, hull parts to be mounted inside. If you put the A100 inside these two pieces of hull, it will turn into a missile silo. So I want six of these, they're too deep. Um, and I also want to have enough fuel for it to travel around about 6,000 kilometers. And I would really like it to hit 500 kilometers an hour in terms of speed. I may be asking too much. I may not be able to do that with this many uh, missiles. I'm only able to do it with four. But let's just get a basic build put together right now. So I want to do missile, missile, maybe not want it to go like this. I'm then going to add in some fuel tanks. I'd like the fuel tanks to be a little bit below the deck. So we'll do them like this. Actually, I'm going to put a space between the fuel tanks. So we'll do something like this. I'm maybe not liking, I'm, I'm kind of just making this up right now. I'm maybe not going to like how it's going to come out. Let's just replace this on the ship. And then we'll need to replace this on the ship and Replace this on the ship and replace this on the ship. 
Um, I'm not really liking how this is looking so far because these big fuel tanks really are very ugly indeed. Um, but if we just go one, two, three, four. Um, no, I'm not liking how that's looking at all. Let's, let's rethink this. Okay, I think I'd like the missiles all together in a bank, and I'm gonna start with four and just see how that comes out. Now, I'm just gonna put them adjacent to the bridge for now, but I'm probably gonna move the bridge later on in the build. But I want these on the ship from the start because there's something we need to build around. So A100, 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 A100. So that's our that's our main um, armament on the ship, these, these four A100s. I would like more if I can fit them in. Let's move the bridge down to below them. And let's think about fuel tanks. Let's actually go with standard fuel, just out of curiosity. So I'm just gonna add in some hull pieces here and just see what we come up with. I will do this, we'll do this. Um, and what we're looking for is I'm gonna go with one, two, three, four, five, D30. Let's move this bridge oops, to here again. And we'll add in another hull piece and we'll add another D30S. And I'm actually gonna put in a two D30 so that it has traversal. And I know we're at 724 kilometers per hour right now, but we have a lot of components still to add to this ship. Um, I'm gonna add in a hull piece here and that's gonna hold our first of probably many generators. So what are we looking at? We need fuel, but we're currently <laughs> we're currently actually powering this ship with what we've got. So in terms of fuel, I'm thinking for the moment, and this is not gonna be enough, but it's just me like doing some working out. We're gonna use standard hull. We're gonna use standard fuel tanks if we can. So one, two, three, four. That's four fuel tanks. We've lost an engine here somewhere. Is it behind the ship? No, it's not behind the ship, okay. So at the moment we're looking at uh, 1,000 kilometers of range, uh, 706 kilometers per hour, thrust to weight ratio of 7.9, which is pretty high. So we're gonna need, um, right, if we're gonna hit 6,000 kilometers range, then I need uh, this another five times. So I need another 45, is that right? I need a lot of fuel tanks. Or if we just remove these, and it's going to look ugly, but I'm just going to check if I want to hit 6,000 um, kilometers of range. I need to add one, two, three. If I get four fuel tanks in here, we can hit the range that we want to. Um, and that's probably how I want to do it. I'm thinking of some layouts for this ship. If we go with the components that we're looking at here. I quite like the missiles being in a bay like this together and with a bridge next to them. I think it looks quite nice, but fitting the fuel tanks in here is going to be a bit tricky. Let's try removing these hull pieces. And we'll just move, the, move this out of the way. And if we go with a run of hull along here that's four wide, and we put a fuel tank in here and a fuel tank in here, Let's just see what we can get. I want to keep a flat top to the ship for a reason. I need to change this. Actually, let's go with a slight asymmetry here. Take this a little bit out of our standard design. We put a fuel tank here, and maybe we have another fuel tank like here. So it's a little bit, a little bit funny. I don't know. I move the shape's a bit awful. I'm surrounding these in hull just to make sure that power can flow around them. Um, I could also do this like this. I quite like this like this though. I could obviously just put these two fuel tanks here, but I don't want too big a bulk of fuel tanks. And then I could build some hull down here that I might get rid of, because I know that every piece of hull I add does interfere with our top speed. Then I could take all of this off, excuse me for a second. Oops. I'm sorry the dog's barking so much, I'm not sure what her problem is. Hopefully someone will go and speak to her in a second and find out what the problem is. I might need to check on her and then we'll just, I'm just gonna put some hull pieces down here. And just to prove it by the way, even though these are elevated pieces, if I was to put a D30S in here, it is blocked. You can no longer put an engine in there like you used to be able to. So we're just gonna put our engines down here again. So that's us back up to 365, 6,000. I would like the ship to be a bit faster, but we'll have a look at that in a second. Now, we've currently got enough power um, by a lot. What I want to add in here is we're gonna need a tracking radar. So let's just bring this up here. That should be high enough. I will add in another MR-12 like this. So it can, it can track and direct its own missiles. Let's add more hull along underneath these fuel tanks like that. 
and add in some more T30Ss. And I know this is getting really inefficient, so we're going to investigate using RD51s in a second. So that gets us up to 530 kilometers per hour. We've got a range of 5,749 kilometers per hour. We need a little tiny touch more fuel, but that's why I left all of this space here open. We need some more crew as well, so I'll add in a large crew quarters here. The only thing we're missing at the moment is a VAC pods, EVAC pods. So we're looking at what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten D30Ss. So the equivalent of that in RD51s would be what, three, six, just over three of these. So just for argument's sake, let's add in three RD51s in this block here. Let's see how that comes to. So I'm just going to get rid of all these pieces here. Okay, and I get some large hull, and we just go one, two, three, and then we'll add these engines in. So one, two, all right. So now we're looking at top speed of 463 kilometers per hour and a range of 5,379. That's before I remove these. If I remove these just for weight, for, to check the weight, 339 kilometers per hour. So we do still have a higher top speed with the D30s, um, but what we don't have is we have we have worse range. Um, what we could also just experiment with is if I remove these D30s here, and if I remove this hull, this, this ship's going through a big redesign right now, but I'm having some ideas on how to maybe make it work. We'll move this hull up to here, this fuel tank up to here, this fuel tank up to here. We now got space down here for more large hull. So I actually added two more of these. We add in two more RD 51s. I guess about to 400 kilometers per hour. And then let's just get rid of this hull here too. Because what I'm going to do is add in another, oops, another large hull here. I think this is very, a very ugly ship right now. And another large hull here. And what I could add in is two RD-59s as rotational thrust engines. Um, this one isn't connected to the ship, so it has no power, but if I put a block in here, it will be. Um, now we're up to 4,420, I don't like this. I think I preferred it with the D-30Ss. Um, so let's go back to the drawing board. Let's get rid of these off. I don't think, that, I don't think with this ship, I think if I've got lots of armor, the RD-51s make sense. Because I'm not putting a lot of any guns or armor on the ship, I'm putting, I'm gonna maybe put some weapons on the ship. I don't think they're going to come into play as being as important as I'd like them to be. So let's just, um, what if I did this? What if I removed this, brought this up one, so these match. I'll just get rid of this as well, we'll deal with this later. Okay, and then we'll put in our double hull down here. So. We'll re-add in our engines. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to put in some, the problem is there's anything I put on the outside here is not gonna get any fuel, any, any power. But what I could do is something that I think might look quite interesting is I separate these by one block and I build a line of hull between them. Oops, didn't hold on shift. Anything I add on the outside will now get it. And I've got these weird balls of fuel. I don't know, this could be the ball carrier. Um, and I can add in and two whole pieces like this and a whole piece like this. And then in these, I could mount my two D30s for my directional thrust. And I could also add in my D30S down here. That gets us to five, 451 kilometers per hour, which is just 50 kilometers shy of my prefer top speed. I think that's okay. It'll outrun pretty much everything. We've got a range of just under 6,000 kilometers, a fuel consumption of 300 tons per 1,000 kilometers, which is pretty good. Um, we're carrying 1,800 tons of fuel. Or is it, wait, from this nature, no, it's mass to fuel. Okay, it's different. Uh, what else have we got? Combat time of 944 seconds. We can hang around in combat for ages. Now, I'm quite happy with this, but what I could do I just want to select these pieces. Can I do that? Or does it select everything? So it's everything. Okay. 
Um, I could try moving this out and adding in another two missiles, or even just one missile, because I can move this generator here, and I could actually just easily, easily slip an A100 in there, like that. Although this piece here needs to be changed. Um, I know that the corner piece is actually... Uh, I, I want to I'm gonna, I'm gonna just put a whole piece in here. I know I can use the corner pieces, but I quite like the way it looks. Uh, again, aesthetics are a big deal for me. So now we've got our five A100s. We've still got a decent speed. What else does this ship need? It could probably do with some anti-air, which we could probably slot in quite easily. I could add in a hull piece here. And just like on our other ship, a hull piece here, which will be blocked from shooting in pretty much, I mean, no, it's not gonna be great. If I go to guns and check our 2A37 here. It can shoot straight up and to the right, which is probably all I need, because I'll bring the ship down if it's getting attacked. And then this gun here can shoot backwards. It's not a lot. This is this this is a to what you would call a token defense. Um, but I could also put I could also put another 2A37 here, right? And that gets us a reasonable coverage. There's also no reason not to, if I go hull, um, where else can I put this? I could put a piece of hull here, here, and here. I could also add in some sprints, because I've got the tracking radar. So I could go sprint, 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 like that. And then I need to add in a large ammo and a small ammo, which we'll put like we can put in here, for example. Uh, we need a little bit more power as well. We're at 57% power, so we need a large power generator. That should get us over the line. Uh, we're now looking at top speed of 366 kilometers per hour, but we still have a great range. So we have lost a lot of, um, is this gonna launch okay? I think it's gonna launch fine. Or we're still, we're gonna, we've lost a lot of, uh, we, need, we need more crew as well. Crew's not essential, but I like to kind of, you know, make my numbers not flash red anymore. We'll sit at 94% crew, I'm happy with that. So the, the, the thing that I'm concerned about now is our top speed is a little bit low. I could be cheeky and add a D30 in here and a D30 in here. That gets us back up to 400 kilometers per hour, but it drops our range to 4,605. Um, I do have room for some fuel tanks. If I can stay over 350, that's quite nice. So that's just dropped our speed down to 489 kilometers per hour. Our range is just under 5,000 kilometers. Um, I'm very worried I've got my maths wrong and these, these these ranges are very bad, but I think that's a great range. So this is a fast, I actually really want the speed to be higher. I really like the speed to be 500 kilometers per hour rather than 400, but I honestly don't think I'll be able to get that extra that extra speed out of this without making, look, making it look really ugly. I could do something like this. I could grab another D30S here and here. It looks ugly as hell. That gets us a 456. I don't think it's really worth it. The other thing I could do is I could replace these D30s with NK25s. Um, the NK25 has more thrust, but consumes more, consumes double the amount of fuel. Let's just see what the numbers come out as. If I do that, I don't think I'm going to like it. So with these, we go to 426 kilometers per hour, but we've lost a thousand kilometers in range, um, which is quite significant. So I don't think I want to do that either. Let's get rid of these. I'll add back in the D30s. Okay, so just under 400 kilometers in range. I'm sure we had more speed than that before I did that change. 5,000 kilometers in range. Um, thrust to rate ratio 4.3. We also need to add legs, but that's not too hard. In fact, um, if I remove this and remove this and add it in another hull piece here and here, I could put these engines back like this and then I could add the legs in. Let's just do that so we'll see what it's like. I think I'm gonna need these big, this, these big boy legs. So now we're looking at 362 kilometers per hour. It's fast, it just might not be fast enough. I think I'm being a bit greedy. Let's just see if it can land. 
Look how cool those legs are deploying. I don't think it's going to be able to hold its own weight with these legs. We're certainly going to have a unique looking fleet, if nothing else. Well, this one can take its own weight, at least. Alright. I'm going to go with this. I'm not super happy on the speed. Oh, apparently we're under power now because I added in the legs. I actually need to fix that. Ugh, it's never-ending, isn't it? I've got no half spaces left, do I? I think I've used them all up. Yeah, I've used them all up. But I can easily add one in somewhere. Because, um, again, this isn't a combat ship. So I could just do something like add in... Two hull here, and a half space jet. Why can't I put a generator in there? That's weird. Does it have to be like this? Yeah. Why can't I put it? Oh, it's because the back of this is going in there. Okay, but I can put a generator in there. That gets us up to the right amount of power. These aren't badly blocked enough that they can't fire. Um, so we've got a top speed of 358 kilometers per hour, which is the only thing I'm not super happy with. But I think I want to see if that works for us. Uh, obviously, again, we've got no defenses, so if we get hit, we're dead, but that's kind of the plan. So let's save this as our missile carrier. I need a name for this as well, please, um, if anyone can think of something. And then the last thing I want to do is we're just going to go into a test campaign. Skip the story, space to continue, skip the tutorial. So I just want to check that these guys can operate okay. So if we go to carrier one, which is our aircraft carrier, and we fully fuel it, it has a nice operating range, which I'm really happy with. And if we do the same with our missile carrier and fully fuel it, it also has a massive range. So let's say I wanted to send it up to Assault Narad. Let's see how long that takes. And I also want to get the, if we just go back to, oh, I've launched both of them. That's okay, because I'm gonna split them off. So this carrier here, I want to send with a minimum load of fuel to up to CERT. And let's just, just see how long this takes for both of them to get there. I've left him with 6% fuel, is that right? No, he still has a decent amount of fuel, and this guy still has a decent amount of fuel, he doesn't have that much fuel. So look, they're moving at, they're moving at nice, a decent decent speed. If I just fast forward, um, I don't care about radio signals. Attention, new oh, on the radar. awesome. Well, we, we can test out that all the missiles work. So I just wanna make sure I can launch them all. And the nice thing about the 400 kilometer radar is our radar distance is also the same range as our A100s, which is why they work together quite nicely. <laughs> Alright. Oh, I just want to make sure all five missiles can fire. I know I'm killing a trade fleet. This isn't important. This is just me testing stuff. You missed. I wonder if the missiles, I've never fired a missile at a I've never seen a miss before. Especially an A100. That's three. I think it's gonna miss as well. Yeah, I wonder if they're programmed not to hit the trade fleet, the um, prize ship. I've never, never tried to do this before. So we should be, I need to see two more missiles launch. That's four. And then the fifth one. Oh, that's weird. Do they come out together? Or does it come back around? Is that two missiles together? And there's our fifth missile. Okay, so there's one missile. So all of our missiles work. I wanted to make sure those, those missile barriers weren't like blocked by anything, so that's fine. And then I just want to check to make sure that our aircraft carrier can do something. Okay. I love how the missiles can't hit the uh, prize ship. That's pretty cool. All right, and then this guy here, if I was just to launch an attack, we'll just launch all of our 29s with cannons, one, two, three, at this place, and we can launch all of the T7s at CERT. And yeah, that looks like they're all gonna operate okay. They've got good range, the speed's fine. It's okay. Um, how, what is the speed on this Martian fleet? 
121. So these guys massively outspeed it. They could chase it down if we wanted to. I'm not going to play this out. Uh, um, but yeah, look, everything seems to be working okay. We're going to take these with us on our campaign. I'm not. Sh I'm hopefully going to get a lot of use out of them. So the next ship I'm going to build is our brawler and then our flagship, and then we're good to go. But for now, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.